Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a car speedometer in the UI. Let's begin. Okay, so here we are with an empty scene. Let's start off by making the speedometer visual in the UI. So let's go into the UI canvas. And here first make a nice window container. So let's create an empty game object and call it our speedometer. Now inside, let's add a new UI image for our background. And in here, in my project files, I have a simple speedometer background, just like that. So this will be the background. Now on top of it, we want a needle that will rotate from around this position all the way around to this position. So let's make that needle visual. Another UI image for the needle. And let's drag this needle texture. Okay, so this is the basic setup. As you can see, the needle is pointing to the right, which matches the rotation of zero in Unity. So these are the only two visual elements we need so far. Now through code, we want to control the needle. And what we want to do is rotate it. And since we are in the UI, we're going to modify the Euler angles that you see in here, except the only one we change is the Z. So as you can see, we want our speedometer, the needle when it's at zero to be around 220. And when it's at max speed, it should go to about here, about minus 20. So in here, as you can see on the angle field, if I increase it, you can see it going counterclockwise. That is the way Unity is working. So for our speedometer, we are going to have to go into the negatives. So we start off at 220, end up at minus 20. So we have to decrease our Euler angles. Okay, so now let's write the code. First, make a new C Sharp script, and we're going to call this our speedometer. So first, on awake, let's grab a reference to our needle transform. Okay, so that's our reference. And now on our private void update, let's just rotate it. Now in order to rotate, we need a function that will return a rotation. So let's make that. This will essentially convert a certain speed variable into a Euler angle rotation. So let's define some constants to do our math. So as we saw in the editor, we're going to have zero speed at a rotation of 210 degrees and our maximum speed will be at minus 20. So these are the constants for the angles that the needle can move in. Now we also need to define a certain max speed. We're going to define it as a normal variable instead of a constant so we can change it later. And also you need a variable for the current speed. Okay, so we can now go into our get speed rotation function. And in here, the first thing we need is to know the total amount of angles that we can move through. So as we defined up here, the zero speed is at 210, whereas the max speed is at minus 20. So we need to identify the difference between those two. So the total angle size will be the zero speed angle at 210 minus the max speed angle, which is at minus 20. So our total will be 230. So now we also need to normalize our speed. So now we have our speed as a value between zero and one. So if we are at speed max, we want the needle to be at the maximum. And if we are at speed zero, we obviously want the needle to be at zero. So we're just going to return our zero speed angle, which again, remember in Unity, the angles go counterclockwise, but we want to go clockwise. So instead of a plus in here, we do a minus the speed normalized multiplied by the total angle size. So if speed is zero, this will return zero. So we will be at zero speed angle. If speed is one, it will return the total amount of the total angle size. So we get the zero speed angle, 210 minus 230. So we get our minus 20. All right, so all of this should be correct. Now in our awake, let's set the speed to zero and the speed max, let's say 200. In here, let's say we are defining speed in kilometers per hour. And now on the update, Let's increase the speed every frame. So we are increasing the speed by 30 kilometers per hour per second. Just making sure it doesn't go over the maximum. And finally, we need to set the needle Euler angles to what our function returns. All right, so all of this should be correct. Essentially, we're just doing math to convert a speed variable into a certain angle. So we should now be able to see the needle constantly increasing by 30 kilometers per second. So with a maximum of 200, after about eight seconds, it should reach the maximum. Okay, there it is. As you can see it started off in there, which is a zero. 
now it's increasing and around here it won't stop which is the maximum speed yep there you go we got our nice needle going through all of the valid values so now let's make some labels to display the speed at various points in the speedometer so in here back in the editor we're going to create a template that we can then duplicate so let's create an empty game object this will be the speed label template so we want to add some dashes and a text field so let's add an image for our dash So there's the dash image, just a white dash. Now let's add a text label. Okay, so this is the template for our speed label. As you can see, we're going to duplicate this game object and then rotate it in order to add numbers to the various angles. So first let's go back into our code. And now in here, let's grab the template transform. And let's hide the template by simply doing set active to false. Just like that, our template is hidden. And now let's make a function to set up the labels. So in here, let's start off by defining the number of labels we want. And now we need to calculate the total angles like we did previously. So we copy the total angle size. So now let's do a simple for. In here we're doing less than or equal since we want the last position to also contain a label. And now in here all we need to do is instantiate our template transform. In here we calculate the speed normalized value for this index on this label. And let's rotate our Euler angles using the same code that we did down here. Then we also set the text on the new label. And finally, we need to show this since the label template will be hidden. So we simply go into the game object and set the active to true. All right, so essentially we are instantiating a label template. We are calculating the speed normalized for this label. We're using the same code we used down here in order to calculate the angle for that particular position. We set the angle on the label and we set the speed to actually match the speed that should be on that label. And finally, we simply set it to active since the template is hidden. So all we need is to call this up here to create the speed labels. And now let's see. And yep, there are our labels, all of them being correctly placed. That is zero in there and that is 200 in there. Now, obviously one issue you see is that the text cannot be read. Like in here, this is upside down. So let's make sure the text doesn't rotate around with the label. So in order to make sure the text doesn't rotate, let's simply grab that transform and set the Euler angles, which these are the global ones after including all the transforms. So we simply set this one to vector 3.0 in order to not be rotated. So let's see. Yep, there you go, the dashes are correctly rotated, but now the numbers are readable. Now, another issue you can see is that the numbers are on top of the needle, so let's sort that. In the Y, the order in which things are shown is dependent on the hierarchy. So in here, the needle is above on the hierarchy compared to the other templates, so it gets rendered before, so the others appear on top. So all we need to do is drag the needle in order to be on top, and then it would be on top. So let's do that through code. So after creating the speed labels, we can simply tell the needle transform to set as last sibling. And at that point, it will go to the end of the hierarchy and should be on top. Let's see. And yep, there you go. The needle is now on top of the numbers. And now since we made our labels dynamically, we can easily change how many we have and what they display. So for example, up here, instead of having 10 segments, let's say just six. And we can also go up here and set the maximum speed to be 400. So now let's see if our labels are correct. And yep, there it is. We now have a maximum speed of 400 and it is split into seven segments. Seven since we also include the last one. So our speedometer can now display any value for the car that we're driving. So this speedometer would work on a car with a very low maximum speed as well as for one with a very high. So now let's add some player controls to our speed variable just to test things out. So here in the code, let's do a very simple acceleration, deceleration and braking. So on the update, 
let's put our code in a function Okay, so here we have some very simple code just for testing player input. So while I'm pressing the up arrow, we have an acceleration of 50. So our speed variable will increase by 50 per second that we hold our up arrow. If the up arrow is not being pressed, then we are decelerating. So we reduce it by 20 per second. And if we press the down arrow, then we are braking. So we reduce it by 100 per second. And finally in here, let's just clamp our speed variable to make sure it stays within valid ranges. And up here, we can now remove our testing code and just like that. All right, so let's see our very simple player input. Okay, there it is. Everything's on zero. Now if I press the up arrow, if there you go, the speed is increasing, let go, and it's now decreasing, increase again, and I go up to maximum. And if there you go, max speed. Now I press the down arrow, and there you go. We got a very intense break. So there you have it. We created a very nice speedometer in the UI. It displays the current speed and dynamically creates the labels based on a certain maximum speed and a certain amount of labels. So this code is very adaptable to whatever car values you use. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.